Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a McDonald's Happy Meal box. This was a special request emailed to me by Patrick. Thanks so much Patrick. Let's go! Alright, first I'm going to start things off in Adobe Illustrator. I have a new file opened up and I've already placed in my reference image on a layer here called Reference. I've embedded the photo and I've locked the layer so that I don't move anything around, but I can still work on top of it. And I also have this design layer here, which is where I'm going to build all of my pieces. So first I'm going to start with the box, the base of the box, the whole thing's a box, but I'm going to start with the base of the box. And I'm going to use this one because it's a little more straight on and just make a rectangle that fits about those dimensions. I'm going to pull that to the side. Well, now I'm going to click on shape and I'm going to see what the width is. It's 3.9 inches. I'm not going to make this one to scale. I'm just going to make one that is proportional. So 3.901. I'm going to assume that this is perfectly square and we'll see how that looks. I'm going to open up the 3D and materials panel and I'm going to click extrude. And in the depth, I'm also going to put 3.9 and let's see how that looks. I think it might be a little more narrow than that. So I'm going to choose 3.5 instead. The other adjustments that I'm going to make are to bevel the edges just slightly. So I'll come and I'll click on this little circle and I will bring that to like 0.6. And then to make the bevel happen on the other edges, I click bevel in the 3D and materials panel and I click on round for the shape. And I bring that width into about for 3%. So that way it's on all of the sides. When you say bevel both sides, it'll apply it to all the sides so that when you look at the shape, it's a little softer. It doesn't have those sharp edges. Next, I'm going to create this panel. I'm gonna work on the triangle panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw this angle so that it lines up with the box. And sometimes it helps to turn off the effect for a minute so that you can see what you're working with. All right, I want this anchor point to be in the middle and I also want this to be an outline. I'm gonna make it about two point stroke. And since this also has a soft curve, I'm gonna select this anchor point and I'm going to bring that in a bit. Now I'll come over to 3D and materials and I'll click extrude and it was 3.9 inches is what I'm going to select. Beautiful. I might bring the bevel back up just a bit. Nice. And then I'm going to copy this and instead of having it an outline, I'm going to flip it around so it's a fill and I'm going to bring the depth down to like 0.02 so it's a flat panel. And this will be the piece that you see on the inside here. And we might have to make some tweaks on this, but it should mostly just fold right in and make the illusion of this, this fold in this crease. All right, and the other thing that we can do is make a copy of this shape because you can see that it has these dashed lines here, which I think help make it look like it's cardboard. So I can replicate that by copying this triangle shape, bringing that depth down to 0.02, and I can make this a dashed line. So I will select white because it looks like it's, yeah, it's white. And then um, I can adjust the amount of the dash. So let's try, it was about like four, four per side. So if I choose about 21, yeah, 21 gets us those dashes. I might make them even a little more slim and narrow. I can also do the same for the edge here. I will just draw one line and then if I hit copy and extrude, then I'm able to make the edges there for that cardboard. And then the last piece are the handles, the golden arches. So I'm going to go to this example and I'm just going to use my oval tool to make the first arch and I don't need those dashes so I'll just select yellow go back to the outline so that I can see those inside shapes and I'm just going to drag the anchor points around tracing this shape 
This took a little longer than I expected. I'm gonna fast forward because it's boring. Now I'm going to take these two shapes and use Pathfinder to unite them. And then I'll click on that other shape that I had and use minus to subtract it. So you see when I flip the fill, it is a solid shape for the whole. I'm gonna copy it over and just make some tweaks. I think I might keep it exactly as is because there is that distortion from the perspective of the shape. So I'll probably keep these the same and I'm even gonna level them out. It's gonna look weird, but it's gonna be better once I work with the 3D shape. The other thing that I need to do is connect them with this rectangle. And then I need to create that taper on the side here. I'm just using Pathfinder and the Align tool to make those golden arches. And then with this, I'll click Extrude. And I'll choose a depth of 0.02 to match those other pieces. All right, so now I'm going to take each of these, go to the bottom of the 3D and Materials panel, and click Export 3D Object. Let me turn on the eyeball so I can see. Export 3D Object and Export 3D Object. And I'll name each of these. Just name it whatever makes sense for you. And then the only file type that we need is this OBJ file type. And then in the bottom right, click Export. Now it's time to go assemble those in Adobe Dimension. All right, and that wraps up part one of how to create all of those pieces, those OBJ files in Adobe Illustrator. Now we're going to jump into Adobe Dimension in part two and put it all together. So join me over there.